Coach, uh, finishing the Big West with the 500. Or, sorry, Big West, Big Sky. I was gonna, I was gonna correct you, but I thought I'd let it slip. But it's tough after you just talked, to, you know, done talking to Steve. And congratulations to men's soccer. I think it's an incredible turnaround what they just accomplished. And uh, Steve deserves a lot of credit, but like he said, I think players uh, win games. So congratulations to men's soccer. Very good. Um, so, so finishing the Big Sky with a 500 record. Um, you know, is that kind of a way to salvage kind of what, what, what's, what's happened these last few weeks, or, or are you still kind of antsy about kind of what happened earlier in the year? Well, I think it's a combination of all of the above. I think salvaging is what we had left. I mean, to be honest with you, the best we could be would be 4-4, four and four, and we've got ourselves in a position to be 4-4, four and four, which is a great credit to our players because it is, it is difficult when you know that you're not going to have the opportunity to get into the national playoffs or win a conference championship. But our players truly have, did, have showed their love of the game. I think they've practiced extremely well. I'm really proud of the way they've handled it. Uh, and one of the things we challenged them with, if you want, really want to use it, and it's not a good phrase, woulda, shoulda, coulda, but the fact is if we really want to say that, we need to win this week. If we win this week, then the fact is we probably could have done some things ourselves a little bit differently would have changed the outcome of the season. And that, to me, is fixable for our future. So it's a, it's a game for our seniors. It's a game for our team. It's a game for our future. It's an opportunity to win three consecutive games going into 2016 against a team that has a chance to go to the playoffs. So I think that there's, uh, again, it's, it's a game of football, and the game of football is important. And as long as you respect that fact, you can play it as hard as you possibly can. Each and every week, at some point, good things are going to happen for you. Uh, the win against Davis, you know, kind of the way you guys won, is it, is it still kind of irritating to win this year and then compared to what happened last year? Yeah, I, you just can't. I mean, the past is the past. And what we can do, like I said, we can learn from the mistakes we made four and five weeks ago. We can learn from the mistakes that we made a year ago. And I think the way we came out and the emotion that we came out with and played in the 34 to 14 lead at, at halftime and uh, the amount of yards we had and eight possessions and eight touchdowns in reality, uh, those are incredible numbers. And our offense really has been somewhat consistent that way the entire year if you take the fumbles out of the equation. Uh, but uh, I thought it was a great performance. I thought the defense played well enough. I think that we put them in a couple of tough spots in the third quarter with early fourth quarter with a couple of fumbles that allowed Davis to stay in the game. But I thought overall, I, I felt really confident that they could not stop us. And that was probably evident because Eric questioned me right after the game about going for it, fourth and one on our own nine yard line. But the fact is, is we had had the ball three times and we had scored very easily three consecutive times. So one yard, I felt pretty confident we could get a yard, and I think that that even gave our team even more confidence. Uh, you know, kind of the senior class, their, their last game, just kind of talk about how they've kind of improved the program, made the program what it is, and just kind of uh, how you feel about them. Well, I think there's a lot of guys you could talk about. And I mean, you know, Chris gets a lot of attention, and deservingly so. I mean, how many guys have thrown a touchdown, caught a touchdown, and ran for a touchdown twice in their career. Not once, but twice. That's, an, that's incredible for me to think about that. Uh, and he deserves a lot of the credit, but so do a lot of other guys. It was Steven Sipple and Weston Walker on the offensive line, and they've started something like 36 or 37 games each. Uh, the three wide receivers, Roland, Willie, and Jordan, have done some great things for us this year on defense. I mean, Colin's going to be up here in a minute. Fernando Cabico, Carlton Dennis, Chris Fletcher, woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know, there's a guy that, you know, if he doesn't get hurt, who knows what happens for him and for us uh, as a football team. Burton DeConing has played his tail off the entire year, too, to Okay, I mean, there's on and on. I could go through a list of guys that, and all of them. But, uh, you know, I really think that a lot of guys get a lot of attention, but it's the unsung heroes. You know, it's the Fernando Cabico. Colin Blairs, Weston Walker, Stephen Sipple, that you don't hear a ton about. But those guys really help make us who we are. Uh, and I also think that Chris's leadership has been instrumental in who we are as well. I mean, when he plays, his, his emotion, he wears an honest sleeve. He's not one of those quiet leaders. I mean, you're going to hear Chris Brown. And I think that uh, he does a tremendous job of that. And I think we had a great blend of leadership uh, between all seven captains that we had. Colin's kind of a lead-by-example guy. Do as I do and good things will happen for you. And Colin knows that he's not the biggest, the strongest, or the fastest. But he starts for us at free safety and does a great job because of who he is. And I think that those are the landmarks that we're trying to hit upon the other 87 returning players for next year is that you can be what you want to be, understand who you are, and try to be the best you possibly can be. So, you're, you know, kind of going off what Travis said with the seniors leaving um, and Chris Brown just being recognized in this past game against UC Davis, who, who do you see kind of as being not necessarily his replacement for next year, but who do you see as being like most fit to fill those shoes? Well, I think there's a couple of guys on the team. I mean, Daniel Graves has started 
seven or eight games already in his career. And he, we were, you know, because of his injury, we were able to redshirt him. And because of his injury and redshirting, Khalil Jenkins, a true freshman, got an opportunity to show how athletic he is. So I think the quarterback position is pretty solid for the future. And I think it, uh, it's only going to continue to grow. Uh, Chris Brown had a tremendous career, and it's going to come to a close Saturday night. And I hope it comes to a close with a win and another great performance by Chris. He played as well as he could have played last Saturday. You, you can't play in our offense a better offensive football game than he played. He graded out in the high 90s. And if he does that again, what a great way to close his career and what a great example to make for the younger players in our program that this is the way we play quarterback in the offense that we're running. He did a tremendous job, and we expect that from Daniel Graves next year or Khalil Jenkins, whoever it ends up being. And uh, we'll see what happens down the road. But I feel very confident in those two young men. What do you know about North Dakota State and how they play? Well, North Dakota is, uh, they have, they're six and four and they have an opportunity to, to, to go to the playoffs or the win it. They're going to need some help probably from some other teams in the conference. Uh, they have an FBS win over the University of Wyoming, which is a great win. And they're very, very good on defense. They have a code. They play very passionately and very aggressively, which is always good on defense. Uh, they're big and physical. Uh, and they have a coach that has coached against the option a lot of times in his career and feels like he has a very good understanding of it. Uh, and uh, some of the things that they've done to us in the past, uh, we have tried to study because we think that he's probably the guy that uh, instrumented some of those, even though he wasn't there because some of the guys that were coaching there prior were some of his former assistants and players. And then I think, no question they're the most improved offensive team in our league. For where they were watching the games one, two, and three to where they are now with the little freshman running back Santiago, he is probably the most exciting player in our conference. He's fun to watch. He's fast. He's, he's shifty. He's not very big, but they're very big on the offensive line, and they do a great job of uh, getting him into the secondary. And when he gets in the secondary, I haven't uh, seen a team yet that can catch him. What is kind of the mentality of the team going in the last game of the season? Well, I think, you know, we've had the, the two games. It was easy, I think, somewhat easy to motivate the players for playing in the state of California. You're, you're playing Sacramento State and you're playing UC Davis. A lot of the players know each other. Uh, the, obviously, the schools know each other. Obviously, the Davis rivalry helped. There's a lot of great reasons to be motivated to play. This one, it's the last time you get to play at home. You know, And for you seniors, the last time to play at home is going to be a game you're always going to remember. Uh, and I think that the other 87 players on the team owe it to those 18 seniors to play their tails off. And the other thing is it's senior night. Moms and dads are going to be there. The best way to say thank you to your mom and dad for allowing you to play the great game of football, allowing you to do the things you needed to do to be able to go to Cal Poly as a student athlete is to go play your very best football game of your life. And I guarantee at 10 o'clock, moms and dads will be celebrating with their sons and feel very strongly about what they're able to accomplish. So I think there's a lot to play for. And uh, we preach all the time about the love of the game. And the one thing I've liked about this team is we've practiced extraordinarily hard even after those three tough losses that we had in the middle of the season. So uh, I, I have great uh, confidence that we're going to come out and play another good football game Saturday night. When you look at these seniors playing their last game, what do you think they have learned from you and from playing the game of football over their last four or five years? Well, I mean, that, that's a question probably you can ask Colin when he gets up here. I don't know. But, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I, I look at it as uh, I've done this a long time. And the only reason I, I, the reason I really love doing, I love, obviously I love athletics and I love the game of football. I love coaching football and I love everything about being a part of it. But seeing young people enjoy their experience. And uh, it's tough sometimes to do that when you're not winning, when you're five and six or whatever we're going to end up. And I think that uh, if I looked at our players, I would hope that they would say they have enjoyed the game of football because of how we coached it and how we approached the game of football and treated them as young men and not just number 39 or number 38 or number 37 or whoever, but because they were treated as young men that had the opportunity to enjoy it, get to know their coaches. Coaches got to know them. And uh, you see them get their degrees, of which all 18 guys will have their degree at the end of this year, uh, which I'm extremely proud of. And they go from engineering to recreation and communication with five business majors, five kinesiology majors. There's some difficult majors in there. And uh, to see them graduate and do the things that they've done, they've won two championships for the most part. Most of these guys have won a great West championship and a big sky championship and been a part of it. So I think overall, they've had a great career, but you'd have to ask them. I would hope that, uh, you know, the feeling is the same feeling that I had after the UC Davis game when I saw about 24 of our former players standing by the locker room, talking to our players, talking to our coaches, uh, and waiting to have that experience. And hopefully these guys are waiting to have that same experience because they felt so good about Cal Poly and then Cal Poly football. And I think that if we had anything to be instrumental in that as coaches, then so be it, because that would be one of my goals, probably the most important goal, because it's lifelong. Thank you. Yep, thanks.